Hey everybody, we're still on marginal cost. This is part two. This is our last big video for cost of production, or at least I think it's our last big video. In this video, I'm going to just kind of recap what we've done on this graph right here, and then there's going to be a little addendum. We're going to do one little extra thing, okay? Um, this is the big point of the video, though. So once this is done, you can just shoot it, turn it off if you want to. But there's this little addendum that might help give you a little insight that's going to help you, okay? So let's start with this guy. Look at our, the name of it, marginal cost. That's our most important cost curve. Average variable cost and average total cost. I usually say that's the second most and then that's the third most important. Doesn't really matter about the ranking, okay? I want to put these on a graph together. We've got dollars per unit of output. The good news is all three of these are measured in dollars per unit. We got quantity of output, what we're used to seeing on the horizontal axis, okay? What we've seen in all the rest of micro that we've done so far. So let's put these curves up there. In this particular uh, video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put marginal cost up there first. So marginal cost curve, if you see the last one, it's going to have that type of shape. Go down and then up. Same reason the average variable cost and average total cost curves are going to have that shape. We're going to have increasing returns to scale, a little bit of constant, decreasing returns to scale. So that's why we learned all that stuff about returns to scale, is it helps us understand why that curve is shaped that way. Now I'm going to pull a fast one on you. Okay, because I'm about to do the average variable cost curve. And if you watched the last vir uh, video, I should start my dot right there for the average variable cost curve. But in future videos, I'm hardly ever going to do that. Okay, and here's the reason why. It's like there's going to be a break in my graph right there. I'm never really going to start at the first soccer ball we're making at our big soccer ball plant. Okay, so there's always going to be this little break. So it's not so important that I start my average variable cost curve right there. Okay, they were together at some point in the past. It's just when I'm showing the graph right here, they don't have to be together. I hope that makes sense. Okay, if it really bothers you, put your average variable cost right there at the beginning of your MC. You can do that every time and you're fine. I'm just saying if a teacher doesn't, no big deal. They're just assuming they're not starting at one. So here we go. I'm going to start my average. What's going to happen? Well, I'm going to start with my average. Sorry, start with my average variable cost above my MC. Well, if the MC is below my average, it's pulling my average down. So my average is going to go down, 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 down. I just hit the MC curve. So at this point, the MC is going to be above my average. So what does my average variable cost curve have to do? It has to go up. Okay. That's normally the way I'm going to do it. Is I'll just draw an MC in, and then I can put my ABC curve. When I draw my ABC, I'm going to go down, 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 down until I hit the MC. Why? Because the MC is below the AVC for all of these units of output, and if the MC is below the AVC, it's pulling it down. Then the MC gets above the AVC, it's pulling the AVC back up. Now let me put in the average total cost curve, okay? The average total cost, well there's, out, there's fixed cost, average fixed cost has to be put in there. So there's my average variable cost, then there's some average fixed cost. So I just need to start my average total cost above the average variable cost. And if the MC is, is below the ATC, same logic. The ATC is going to be pulled down, pulled down, pulled down, pulled down, pulled down. Now, hopefully, I don't think I actually did that very well. I'm going to take one more shot. Why do I not think I did that very well? Because what I really want to show is the distance between the ATC and the AVC, if we looked at those last videos, should be closing in on each other because the average fixed cost, something we haven't talked about in a couple variables, is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller for every unit of output. Okay, so I just got to right there, hit my MC. My MC is about to be above my ATC, so it's going to pull my ATC up. So draw it in, draw it in, draw it in. There we go. ATC. They should never actually touch, okay? So I'm not sure if that if you can pick it up on the video, but they're not actually touching. They just narrowed in on each other. Why did they narrow in? Because the vertical distance between the ATC and the ABC is the average fixed cost. And like I just said, that's getting smaller. So there it is. That's the general way that we're going to draw those curves as we move on in our next videos when we really start getting into market structures and looking at firms with demand curves and supply curves and all that kind of stuff. When we put these curves in there, you're going to see it look like this. Now that little addendum. Okay. Really want to understand averages and marginal really well. Pay attention right here. 
Okay? I'm going to go back to what we were talking about before, about your average grade and your marginal grade. We all understand our average grade. Hopefully we do, right? You just take all of your grades, um, sum them up, divide it by the number of grades, and that's your average. What's your marginal grade? Okay, that's specific for which assignment you do. Even that little statement right there is really important. Your marginal grade is specific for each assignment you do. Doesn't matter how many assignments you do, the grade you got on your second assignment will always be the same, okay? So I'm gonna draw these on two different graphs, okay? Your average, okay, and I'm gonna draw your marginal. So let me do the average one first, okay? Let's say your average does this, okay? I don't know, maybe you had 10 assignments. So let me stop right there. So you had 10 assignments right there. Actually, I don't like how I did that. I'm going to do that one more time. There's a little bit of problem. You might pick up on why there's a little bit of a problem. We do it one more time. So there we go. Just like that. You had 10 assignments. That's your average. Now I'm going to draw your marginal. Your marginal started at the same place, but maybe went down or definitely went down at a steeper rate because it was pulling your average down but then it went up at a steeper rate, okay? So notice I'm much higher on that 10th grade there than there. Now here's the key point. You had 10 grades. Well, let's go take a look at your average. I'd go to your, that grade right there. I'd go up to right there, draw it over, and we would say your average grade was a 82. I don't know why I picked 82. But your average grade was an 82. So this is it. we could just kind of put an 82 over all of that, okay? 82. Your marginal grade. Well, you made a whatever on your first assignment, a little bit lower on your next one, a little bit lower, a little bit lower, a little bit lower, then your, then your next grade went up a little bit, then it went up more, and then you really started to understand the class better, really started to understand it, now you're just doing great, you're killing this class, and hopefully that's the 10th, I don't know, count them up, maybe it's whatever, but let's just say it's 10. So there's your 10 grades. If you sum this up, divided by the quantity, you get the same amount. Actually, let me just say that a little bit different. If you summed this up, summed every one of these 82s up, and you summed up every one of these, guess what you would get? The same exact number. What I'm trying to say is there's a difference between an average curve and a marginal curve. What are we going to make decisions based on? We're going to make decisions based on our marginal curve our marginal costs, because that's given us specific data for each unit produced. I know I just jumped from grades over to, out to goods produced, but remember, we're really trying to understand cost of production. The marginal curve is giving us specific data for each unit produced. The average curve doesn't give us any specific information for each good, okay? Once the number of grades has been set, okay? Sorry, that's supposed to line up. It didn't. Once the number of grades have been set, now we've got our average. It's really not giving us anything specific for each unit. The marginal one does, and we can make decisions based on this one. And so when we get into theory of the firm, you're going to notice that the decisions about output, how much we should make, are going to be based on the marginal curve. And what I'm really saying is economics is about decision making. We're doing theory of the firm. That's where we're going with this whole thing. We're going with how the firm makes decisions. What's one of the most important decisions that a firm makes is how much they should produce. And when it comes to how much they produce, that decision is absolutely based on marginal curves and not on average curves. That's why marginal analysis is so important in economics. I know that probably didn't clear it up completely, but hopefully that's starting you down the road to fully understanding what are marginal curves and why are they so important in economics? Anyhow, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video.